This is Numbers Man on the fifth. <coughs> excuse me, October 2014. We move into the month of October here with this week in economic. It's an interesting week. President Obama took to the airwaves at the Northwestern University in Chicago to inform the people that the rate of unemployment or redundancies in the U.S. is at a six-year low. It's finally got below the pivotal 6%. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But we have to look back uh, to, uh, to 2009, 2008, 2009, when President Obama took office. The American nation was under a cloud of depression. Make no doubt about it. There was some argument in 2008 as to what the then President Bush should do. They came up with a program called TARP to rescue the banks primarily. And there was an argument that they should not be rescued. That was debated. GW decided that he would sign the TARP bill. Now, what would have happened if TARP were not signed? The picture is not pretty. Within a few days, the major banks, uh, Bank America, J.P. Morgan, etc., would have collapsed. Now, what connection would this have to the regional banks, community banks, etc.? Well, that would have been something that uh, we would have been talking about today. The regional banks uh, being dependent on the larger banks to a certain extent would have received a shockwave. Would the FDIC have been able to support the number of account holders that were vulnerable? The answer there is no. Thus, uncharted territory would have been out there. The automobile industry, located primarily in Detroit, and its supply chain would have collapsed without the reorganization of General Motors through bankruptcy and the Chrysler Corporation. Now, there are political types that argue if nothing should have been done. The consequences, however, would have been those companies would have collapsed. And the problem is the parts supply chain, very important. So that would mean that Mercedes, uh, Toyota, Nissan, etc., that are located outside of the, the city of Detroit, primarily in the south, would have not been able to obtain parts. So thus hiccups would have been in the system. That system would have been on the ropes. And we go to other systems that would have been on the ropes. The entire medical care system, it would have not been a debate over the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. It would have been a a debate over whether or not we nationalize health care or not because that system would have collapsed. And the banks would have been taken on administration as they did in the U.K., but the question there is how long would they have been on the federal administration and reorganization? Difficult to say because the depression itself would have became a greater depression than the Great Depression. And the <coughs> primary reasons for that free fall would have been better data sets, record keeping, 24 hour news, etc. People would have panicked left and right would have been withdrawing their savings if they could withdraw them and at the same time the dollar would have been falling. So in other words you would have had mass chaos that's what would have happened had these programs (coughs) not been instituted. Thus on this backdrop we have now 9 million plus people unemployed there's no doubt about that but that's a figure that uh, has been around not 9 million but Millions of people have been unemployed in times of quote-unquote near full employment because we really never had the data sets to pick these people up 
at that time. And, and we are talking about the recessions of the 1980s under Reagan. Reagan had a recession, was uh, a number of recessions actually that were very, very hard recessions. And this has been a, a continuing pattern. The President G.W. Bush came into office in a recession that started early in his in his term. And also, if you recall, the President uh, William Jefferson Clinton came into office at the end of the uh, term of the first President Bush in a recession. So these recessions have been out here. So thus you have the economic picture of today. It is much better. The uh, signs are out there. And had not been for the sequester and the propagandizing uh, by the right wing in this country, you would have had much more progress on the front of employment. And that is something we'll be uh, be focused on. But the figures where they are now at uh, the below 6% uh, rate, it would take basically uh, the rate to go to 5.5% to start cleaning up, the, clearing up the so-called bush, a brush, I should say, <laughs> of uh, unemployment that's out there. Let's go to uh, that data. Uh, this is from the Bureau of uh, Statistics, and this was released uh, on Friday. And let's uh, dive down into it. Many times what happens is we get a, a, a release, a partial release. Here, 248,000 people were uh, employed, uh, an increase, I should say, in September. And the rate declined to 5.9%. Uh, That's, of course, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this is the household survey data. We like to get it out here in September, and I'll read uh, from it. Uh, the unemployment rate uh, declined two tenths of a percent to five point nine percent. The number of unemployed persons decreased by three hundred and twenty nine thousand to nine point three million over a year. Now this is over the year. The unemployment rate and the number of unemployed persons uh, were down 1.3 percentage points and 1.9 million, respectively. Among the major worker groups, unemployment rates declined in September for adult men, that's at 5.3, women at 5.5, teenagers at 20%, and that has remained there for African Americans, 11%. And little change has uh, occurred there. The uh, jobless rates uh, for Asians, 4.3%. Non-season adjustment there, little change from a year earlier. Among the unemployment numbers, uh, jobs uh, lost in persons who uh, completed temporary jobs decreased by 306,000 in September to 4.5 million. The number of long-term unemployed, those jobless for 27 weeks, and this is something to, to remember. It's only you're only long-term uh, counted as long-term by the uh, government to uh, 27 weeks or more, essentially unchanged at, at three million. So that's, in other words, you have three million of these people are long-term uh, unemployed. So it's basically down to uh, 3 million. These people accounted for 31.9% of the unemployed. Over the past 12 months, the number of long-term unemployed is down 1.2 million. Civilian workforce participation rate is at 62.7%. little change uh, there. It's been around there for a very long time. The unemployed, uh, the employed uh, population ratio was... 59.9% for the fourth consecutive month. The number of persons employed part-time for economic reasons sometimes referred to as involuntary uh, part-time workers or underutilized workers, what do you want to call it, was a little change in September at 7.1 uh, million. These individuals uh, would have uh, preferred 
full uh, time uh, employment and were part time because of the hours had been cut back or because they were unable to find a full time job. That in the uh, throw in some information here in the trucking sector. Evidently, there's a shortage in that sector. I was looking at an article where uh, the trucking companies were advertising on radio and anything else they can advertise on to find workers, giving out bonuses, widescreen TVs, you name it. And these were people uh, to uh, work. The federal mandated rate is at no more than 70 hours a week. I believe it's 11 or 12 hours a day a person can drive. And these are what's termed in the industry as long-haul drivers primarily, so they're having a problem with people that only want to uh, work closer to their region. In other words, if they're in the Northeast to drive in the Northeast, they don't want to go to Los Angeles. So that in itself has uh, caused problems, and also the in- increased record keeping and big data has moved in there. So they're constantly checking records of people to see how many hours they're driving, and that goes into a national database. So those things uh, complicate situations, and some people are literally, as one would say, banned from the road. So the supply is uh, less and less out there. It's not something that young people uh, normally get into, especially if they start a family. Now, if they are young singles, uh, perhaps, and we'll see where these recruitment efforts go. They're probably not recruiting in the urban centers as of yet. On we go. The uh, marginally uh, detached uh, was uh, 698,000 discouraged workers in uh, September, down by uh, 154,000 from a year ago. So in other words, things are getting better. But as Milton Friedman used to say, uh, boom times are there. Uh, To a certain extent, if you are employed, and if you're unemployed, you're in a depression. Discouraged workers are a person who's not currently looking for work because they believe no jobs are available. The remaining 1.5 million persons marginally attached to the labor force in September had not seriously worked for, uh, looked for work for reasons of school attendance or family responsibilities. And these household surveys, uh, I recall many, many years ago, I believe it was in the 70s, well, I personally experienced that, and they have, they're comprehensive. They send, at that time, they sent someone around to actually monitor uh, you and ask your questions, and they periodically would appear. Professional and business services added 81,000 jobs in September compared with an average gain of 56,000 per week over the 12-week period. In September, job gain occurred in employment service services, 34,000. Management and technical consulting services, 12,000 there. Architecture and engineering services, 6,000. Employment and legal services declined by 5,000 over the month. Employment and retail trade rose by 35,000. That's in September. Food and beverage uh, stores uh, added 20,000 workers. Lodger reflecting uh, the return of workers who had been uh, off uh, payroll in August due to employment uh, disruptions. A grocery store chain in in New England, uh, that was a, a situation there. People were out on strike, etc. In retail trade, it introduced 264,000 over the past 12 months. New stores are being built uh, at, at a fairly rapid pace. Healthcare added 23,000 jobs. I noticed in the political race out in Iowa, they were talking about some health uh, care workers being uh, laid off there uh, because of the Affordable Care Act. Overall, uh, workers are being added back. It's sort of the old pendulum. Uh, people are laid off or made redundant, and then many of those workers are added back into the system. Gains of 20,000 per month. In September, employment rose in uh, home health care, a big uh, 
banning industry, 7,000 there. Not very many. You're talking about over the nation and 6,000 in 